Happiest Fast Trico podcast. Welcome back, we should say, because it's been a while since our last episode. Yeah, since April. April, I had to look it up to plan for today and to find everything new since April 28th, I think was the last time we published, and there's been a lot of new stuff since then, and we have a lot to catch up on and talk about. Uh, first things first, we should introduce ourselves in case you are new to the podcast. My name is Stephanie. I'm Naomi. And we are the owners of a LYS, a local yarn store in Montreal, called Espas Trico. And uh, we're here on a sort of threatening rain Monday, but that's kind of okay because after a several weeks, months hiatus through summer, it's finally feeling like sweater weather may come again. I know we have a lot more summer to get through first, but I'm quite comfortable in my sweater today. Same. And also, Happy I about mean, that. when those... When those Nights, summer nights start getting a little cooler. That is happy days for yeah. the yarn store because um, <laughs> you guys must all feel it in your bones because <laughs> that's when suddenly things pick up. People are like, mm, you got anything a little heavier, a little warmer? Uh, so we're feeling that energy for sure of like fall is on the horizon. Uh, not that we want to rush you, but you know, <laughs> if, you, if you're thinking of knits to wear in September and October, now's the time. Yeah, we're certainly getting started with all sorts of exciting projects for the autumn and it kind of feels like I have to I finished quite a lot over the summer. I felt really good about that. So now I have, but I have to hold myself back from immediately casting on too many new things just because I finished one or two things. See, I'm in the opposite place where I feel like I haven't accomplished that much this summer. Um, it's super busy time having a little kid and like we've added soccer to the mix and you think that would mean lots of sitting time, but it's mostly lots of like stressing time about trying to get different places. So I'm really excited for the fall. I feel like my knit mojo is coming back and I'm really excited to cast on. I have something in progress to show as well. Anyway, so let, well, should we go, should we start with what we're wearing? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you go first. Uh, no, you go first because okay. my one is going to be a whole big conversation. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Okay, I'll go first. So um, I started this in February and I just, I'm finally wearing it for the first time. This is my cowgirl crop. Uh, this is by um, Morale Mokri, and she goes by Knitting Ruined My Life, which I think is hilarious, <laughs> on Instagram, and uh, I love it, and I did make some modifications to it. It is originally a t-shirt, uh, so I added some sleeves, and they are indeed a little bit shorter and tighter than I intended, but I'm rolling with that. Is, I, did you do extra decreases? Or did oh, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, you must have done some, but um, do you think, it was it a tighter sleeve as a t-shirt? No, and okay. that's why I thought I needed decreases. Right. So right. I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have like eight decrease rounds in here. That takes out sixteen stitches. That's probably close to three and a half inches at your gauge, right? Yes, and also I thought they would be about four inches longer. <laughs> um, I did, in fact, knit this on a train ride, and so I was doing a lot of math on the fly with the sleeves, uh, and realized sort of as I was binding off this one that my math was wrong. And like I said, I decided to roll with it. I was like, let's just see what happens. And I do really, really love it. I will well, stand up. So they are good. They're, they're that good length past your elbow that you yeah. want. Because you never want a sleeve ending right at your elbow or it makes the fabric buckle. But yeah. it's enough past your elbow that it works. Yeah. And I added a little bit of color work here just to like call back. else because I wanted to use more of the yarn. So pretty. Um, I think I made it a tiny bit longer than called for, but not mm -hmm. a lot. And um, I did change, I added short rows to get a different fit in the neckline. Anyways, I did make a lot of mods. It's very much sort of like a personal project, not a store project. Uh, the main yarn is a Julie Asselin Lazy DK in Naturel, but the rest of the yarns were little bits and bobs left over in my stash that were dyed by um, Tannis Fiber Arts and Kindred Red, it's two of my favorite, favorite indie dyers who do big, bold colors. So I'm... I'm thrilled with it. I can't wait to wear it all into the fall. <laughs> it's so I, perfect. It's so you. And I think I, even with the shorter sleeve, I think it will work with like a rolled up mm -hmm. plaid shirt underneath it, the collar coming out for my full cowgirl <laughs> look. Uh, but today I'm just wearing it with jean shorts and white sneakers and I feel like that works too. And a bright red lipstick, that, or okay. orangey red to match my, my cowboy boots. And I just, before we move on from this, I wanted to make a shout out to one of our viewers, Susan, who was inspired by this project and made all the mods that I suggested <laughs> much more effectively than I did and um, finished way before I did and sent us a finished photograph of it where I was like, oh boy, I gotta get on this um, and knit it as a, as a gift for her sister and sent us a photo before Aww. she gave it. And it's so beautiful. Uh, and Susan, you inspired me to get my ass in gear with this. <laughs> and um, yeah, really cool to see your, your finished, uh, finished sweater. And yeah. So that's, that's my only finished object to show. And 
I have two. To, I have three to show. Okay. Uh, but we'll start with what I'm wearing because this is something very exciting and new. This is the macaron cardigan that I designed and it is a new free pattern on Ravelry and it launched on Friday. So I think we usually launch this podcast on a Friday. So let's say a week ago and uh, we've, it's had a really, really great response. Um, so, so heartwarming and kind of just like, wait, really? Uh, when people actually like and start knitting um, a, a project that I've designed. So thank you, uh, everyone. And if you haven't seen it yet, um, I would really love if you took a, a look at it because it's it's quite similar to some of the other things we have designed. And if you like our sort of standard, really simple top-down raglan patterns, this is very similar in shaping to the, uh, the bright side and the gingerbread. I made uh, some tweaks, obviously, for a V-neck and um, the sleeves are quite different. Um, no, the sleeves are the same as the gingerbread. The gingerbread I you made the change, made the from, change the bright side. from the bright side. Um, so I really sort of took those those details that ended up. This kind of came out of the gingerbread, and the gingerbread kind of came out of me doing so many modifications that it was worth turning it into a new design. Yeah. Um, so, but then this obviously the shaping changes completely when you turn it into a cardigan and with the V-neck, um, and it doesn't have short rows. So if you're intimidated by short rows, first of all, I think you should really try them because they're less complicated than they seem. Yeah. But if you're not in the mood to try something new or if you're not in the mood to battle with short rows, check this one out. So um, I can stand up, which I haven't yet done. It is cropped. Um, it is a nine inch body, 10 inch body length by the time the rib's done. So I really like, my thought was to layer it over high-waisted jeans or dresses. Um, I have this little tank and if I, I was planning to tuck it in too and then, then you can see with a high waist jean it's like really sort of cute silhouette very now but if you if that's not your vibe then wearing it over a layered little top and leggings super cute as well um you were trying it on and thinking that like over a dress, oh, over a dress really for sure would be super cute and here like let's see this sleeve because it's such a perfect like yes this a little bit balloon but not over the top balloon it's very sweet and it works so well with the color and it works so well with the styling that you're suggesting I really love it. The details yeah, are just it's perfect. Very much me. Yes. Thank you. Um, and it's it's boxy. The larger sizes have some decreases in the arms, just so that the balloon isn't too emphasized. But if you want a more emphasized balloon and you're knitting a larger size that does have decreases through the arm, through the sleeve, you can just leave them out and just do them the decreases in all, on all sizes right at the cuff to get it to come in intensely. Um, I did a sewn tubular bind off on the cuff, which is really worth the extra little time to take because it just adds a little bit of stretch when this is already supposed to be really close fitting. Um, so that's all graded out and it just looks super professional when you do the sewn it cuff. It does. It looks, it looks like what machine knitting does to bind off. But I didn't do that on the body. You really don't have to, nor on the button band because I couldn't be bothered to do it. It's a lot of stitches. Over hundreds of stitches. Um, yeah. So, and tell me about the yarn and the color. Yes. This is the exciting thing. So the yarn is our brand new base, Bontrico Euphoria, which is a new base within our exclusive Bontrico house yarns, and it's held with our Bliss Mohair. So I had a whole basket of this to show because I was like, which colors shall I show? And then I was like, all of them. So Let's start with the Summer Peach, and I will hold it up close. This is the summer peach color that I used for the cardigan, and um, here is the corresponding mohair. So this is a, it's a beautiful white, 100% merino, untreated, beautifully soft. I mean. As, I think, completely comparably soft, as soft as superwash merino, but it has this sort of ha hazy, fuzzy, natural feel to it that you just don't get with superwash treated yarns and yet it is softer than some untreated merino like Ulysse which oh, yeah. we love and is also restocked we'll link it below because mm -hmm. we have tons but it's fascinating to feel this alongside Ulysse and to feel how different, how different they are processed the same fiber can be still be just as beautiful and retain a lot of really similar great qualities like um, great stitch definition and still have a really lovely drape due to its spin, which is sort of a loose two-ply. Yeah. So 
So the reason I grabbed this color is because we also have, we have kits for the cardigan in the original pink that I use. We have kits in the Robin's Egg Blue, which I can't show you on mohair because it's so popular that we don't have any left, it's only in kits. Yeah. <laughs> but of course you can um, make your own kit with uh, any color you like. Um, when I, reali I realized when I was looking at the yardages for this, the, the kitting was quite easy because for sizes two to seven, so that's five sizes of the cardigan, all use three skeins of Euphoria and three skeins of Mohair. So that's nice and easy. Um, you can check the yardage specifically for your pattern. I made size one, which is a 43.5 inch, and that relates to about 10 inches of positive ease on me. So that's about as much as I like. I like the boxiness of it. Um, and we tried it on Steph with eight inches of positive ease and it still felt nice it's and great. relaxed. Um, but you can obviously go with what what suits you and um, you'll certainly for sizes about two to five with that kit we have um, you'll have plenty to knit it longer too if you want because I know that's something that not everybody loves a crop <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on what you're gonna wear it with right yeah like... it's true it's true we all have different styles and the advantage of if you want to knit a crop the advantage of using a crop pattern is you get a more realistic yardage estimate so these are some of the other colors in our gorgeous Euphoria base. So if you know our yarns already, you might recognize some of these. Um, we've got, uh, this is our Peacock colorway. This is Arctic Blue. Honey Mustard, which is a favorite. This one is Concord Grape, and on this base, it comes out a lot more variegated than it does on the sock yarn. But I kind of love that, and I it do. has a really consistent variegation across all the schemes. So if you want a really uniform effect, you may want to do the alternating as you would with any variegated yarn in that color. Yeah. But all the schemes are similarly regularly variegated, so I love that. And then we have Brick and Lichen. This pink garnet, I haven't gone for a bright pink in a while, but I instantly cast something on in that, and it's probably going to go on the back burner, but I love it so much. And then this is our sweatshirt colorway, which is really much, very much inspired by that kind of gray you get from a sweatshirt. Rosewood on Oxford blue, it came out so beautiful. rich and so beautiful. Intense. So if you're a navy fan, this is for you. This is our dark olive, meringue. That's the and then color, yeah. Our new color. This is lavender haze. Uh, obviously, Which is your sign to do a fuzzy purple lavender haze sweater. Maybe if you're <laughs> trying to get tickets to that big Taylor show, this is what you need to cast on to wear. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Tomorrow, all of Canada is going to be glued to yeah. their computers trying to get tickets for. By the time you're watching this, we'll know whether or not we, we have. Got, <laughs> we got into Taylor tickets. Yeah, which is. Uh, Big news, Shea Espace Tricot. So all of those Euphoria line up really beautifully with our Bliss Mohair, but we also launched another free pattern for it that is just for Euphoria on its own. And this is the Berlangen Shawl by Catherine Côté of Encephaloscope Knits, and she designed this for us. She has such a beautiful, delicate way with lace, and she brought it into this shawl in a really interesting construction. She and I had a great chat about this. We both like crescent shawls, but I actually find them quite tricky to wear because all of the fabric is in the front and as you wear them, they're beautiful to wear as cowls, but a little harder to position for as me. Shawl, I find yeah. as a shawl, um, I've really enjoyed knitting some crescent shawls, but they're really never what I reach for. I usually end up reaching for asymmetric shawls. And so this is sort of the best of both worlds because Catherine uses increases down the middle either side of the lace panel and short row shaping to elongate the points so it really becomes a schlarf <laughs> <laughs> i don't know where that extra l came from <laughs> so it's super easy to wear the lace drapes beautifully in the front and then the points just fall down a little lower and it's just relaxed and easy and I could tie it up if I wanted to to get really cozy still do that cowl effect um, but I found that just really a, a construction that I'd never seen before super interesting and so I'm knitting this now it is a whip that I did not bring with me oops um, I'm using our sandcastle color which 
Is that here again? Maybe that'll end up in the bloopers. This is the color I'm using to knit mine. It's gonna go beautifully with my winter coat, uh, which is a sort of coral color, salmon coral color. And um, the lace is just showing up beautifully in this lighter color as well. Um, so I should post a picture on Instagram about that soon. I'm One really of the things it. I really love about this yarn is, you know, I love, obviously I love the cardigan. It's so beautiful. And that was what you had cast on first, like as soon as mm -hmm. we had it. But I think really feeling this on its own, you just, it's like, this is an incredible It's so yarn. beautiful. You don't need mohair. If you find that you often mo add mohair to soften something up, you don't need that for this. If anything, it's, I, it's not softer without, it's just different it's without. It's different. Um, Knit it, like don't, this is not a fingering weight to push into, as you say, like a 20 and 21 stitch gauge. It is a fingering weight that wants to be knit a little tighter for that for long wear. Yeah. Um, you know, in a shawl like this, I think it's fine to be yeah, on the exactly. looser side. But if I was knitting a sweater, I would definitely be looking for something in that 24, yeah. 26 range. I'm really excited to try this in color yeah. work. I think it would be beautiful. But yeah, I'm going to be looking at like 26 stitch Absolutely. gauge. And the fabric of this, the garment you choose will affect that too. Um, garter, garter, I find a little bit more resistant just because it has this sort of 3D element that yeah, exactly. staves off friction. Um, similarly, Mohair really helps to prevent pilling. I basically never had anything. The mohair can kind of fuzz up a little bit after a long time of wear, but it's got that like protective layer of fuzz that means the yarn it's held with is, is pr protected from friction and I pilling quite in that same way. And it can also sort of visually disguise yes. pilling and becomes part of a larger fabric piece. So sometimes yeah. I'll, if someone's very concerned about pilling, I will recommend we'll try Probably holding it with them. mohair and then you're not going to see it in mm -hmm. the same way. You won't get those individual distinct pills that you can pluck off. That just, we find that just doesn't happen in mohair garments. Yeah. So we are obviously super excited about this new yarn and we have more new yarn to talk about as sort of preview as well. Uh, but I think overall we spent the summer really thinking about where we want to go and we are really excited about Bontrico. I think yeah. in a way we kind of had our toe in the water and we're trying to figure out whether we should jump all the way in and we decided let's do it. Like we're, we're really excited about it. Yeah. And the response to even our little efforts were so good that yeah. we, like, we gotta go, we gotta go bigger. It's so, again, like I said with, can't quite believe anyone knits my designs, can't quite believe anybody chooses our yarn when there are so many beautiful options out there and, and what is really heartwarming to us, like we just, we, we're not, trend predictors quite so much it's just this color makes me happy and I want to wear it and I want to make more of it so and yeah then, and sometimes and that resonates with people yeah and I mean we know that that yeah. too right that like part of what we respond to is somebody else's enthusiasm and joy for what they're making and then we're like oh I totally get it I'm gonna yeah. do it too um but yeah it can be a little bit like makes me blush a little bit when it's <laughs> when it's something I created that that creates that feeling for somebody yeah like somebody is knitting their very first sweater ever in one of our new colors, the iris purple, and then knitting the classic. Um, and that's just, I can't believe you'd choose my yarn for your very first ever sweater. It's a pretty also great like, feeling. Look at this color. This is a really great color. This is one of our new ones. Steph was definitely <laughs> behind this, or at least my desire to make a color that would make Steph happy was behind this. So that's where this one came about. Um, I, pick out a few others of our new colors as well because this is also what we've been working on this summer I have chiffon I don't have Miami pink, you have it on the but mohair, I have yeah. it on the mohair so I thought I had six no we have five new colors yeah um so I'm showing you on the minis the happy four ply minis which are 25 gram sock yarn skeins of our British blend of swap balls BFL um Exmoor Blueface, Corydale, Swart Balls, and Nylon. Um, and so these five new colors are, do you want to point to them as I say no. them? Iris, Maraschino, Fern, Chiffon Pink, and Miami Pink. So Chiffon Pink is a colder, sort of closer to bubblegum pink compared to the Summer Peach. And Miami Pink is like a stronger coral leaning pink 
Yeah. Um, so I, I really think we've, we're we we're covering all the bases our pinks. with our pinks. Now, here's chiffon on the mohair, so you can see how different it is between the, yeah, the white base, the white base and, and the gray base. base. You could use Happy and um, Bliss together for this cardigan as well. Um, the yardages, you probably need a different number of skeins for some sizes because the yardage on this is fantastic. It's 490 yards and 100 grams. So that's 450 meters and 100 grams. That also explains why I might have this urge to sort of knit it a little tighter, right? It yeah. is a lighter weight yarn. It, it's, it is plump. You can get, like I think the garter, the, the Philangan even is 23 stitches in garter. So that's, that's still, that's not loose. That's, no definitely solidly in the fingering weight range and I think you'd be looking at 23 to 28 stitch patterns for for this one so um obviously we're really excited about developing the palette and yes uh this was also like a little bit of my request where I was like I really want a red but red I love it yeah so much that red I both of us need something in it it looks good on don't, don't reds like that look good on me do they or am yeah. I more of a brick red person this is our color brick no. Both. I mean, both. Also, who yeah. cares? <laughs> you like it. <laughs> That's it, exactly. I'm all about... But I like red within that. I like which red? Yeah. I like both of them. Yeah, they're both good. So, um, this is a good lead-in to some whips and finished objects. Yes. With the minis. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, about the minis, we, we did have these for a while just in kits or just in sets of four, but we decided to go for it and make them available individually. So if you look up the Bon Tricot stuff or look in our show notes, you'll see links to all these. So that's the other thing that's nice about this, is like stripes and little bits of color work, but also heels and toes. If you mm -hmm. want contrast or if you need a little extra, these it, come in very handy. It is a superwash yarn, um, which is great for socks. So, you know, we would probably be among the first to tell you that color work works better with non superwash, but the more sort of rustic, rougher, grippier fibers of this blend mean that it does work really nicely for color work it's not yes. slipping around it's staying nice and even it's behaving almost like uh, a non superwash when you knit it in color work yeah uh okay so where's our oh do you want to do should i do a quick uh, yeah. wardrobe change yeah okay okay let's should we do a step wardrobe change and now we both have unit cardigans on i love this it might be my favorite I mean, and I've just been wearing this, but I still think this might be my favorite finished object of 2023 so far. This is the Stria Cardigan by Andrea Maori, And it is a V-neck with a really lovely deep V. Really great shoulder shaping in the raglan. It is a fisherman's rib, um, really cozy fabric. And I use the minis for the stripes. And uh, I can't recommend this pattern enough. Um, I keep coming back to Andrea Maury's patterns. I, I wonder if I have a similar physiognomy or something to her because they just fit me so well. Um, the I've made like two of her stripes sweater, the, the yoke as well. Um, so I, and I've been eyeing this one for a while. Like I, I went close to her original color combination and it had always just really struck me. Um, it's something I wanted to make. It came out in 2020, I believe, as one of these sort of Insta friends, like drawing people together, uh, knit alongs. Um, so, in the scheme of things, a three-year-old pattern sort of seems like a oldie, but certainly a, a goodie. And I, I do think I that there's no reason to not go back a, a few years. Well, also, when, like, you can't keep up when that's if it. people have a pattern every couple of months, you know, it's totally. like, I can't knit that fast. So, of course, I'm going to be looking back. But yeah. yeah. So, we put together kits for this uh, in Naomi's colors, but also you could easily, you know, if you want to write to us and ask us, we can put together a custom sort of blend of colors for you with the minis. I don't actually have all the colors I use, but, um, I use the Concord Grape, Honey Mustard, Brick, and effectively Imagine Dark Olive, yeah. along with the undyed sweatshirt colorway. But I also instantly got thinking, how beautiful would it be in a dark colored mane with chiffon, lichen and I don't know what else lavender I was haze. thinking maybe yeah maybe lavender haze or arctic blue yeah that'd be gorgeous really pretty you can definitely really like you could pick out what I like about the way the stripes work in this too is that they're small enough that nothing's jumping out but it's just like a palette so you totally. could choose something that really works with the colors yeah. you love to wear yeah make you feel joy when you see them 
and especially if it's mainly a gray or a neutral for the main color you're still going to be able to wear it with everything absolutely and that comes back to that whole thing we've talked about before like oh i can't wear x color but i love it it's like this is a perfect way to bring those colors that you really love that make you feel happy out in the world and confident and joyful to be wearing your knits this is a really great way to build those in even if you don't want to wear a big swathe of for me for example yellow right by my face i love yellow it's absolutely one of my favorite colors but i'm hesitant to wear it and depending on different tones etc but i love that there's honey mustard in here because it's just a happy little pop of my yeah. favorite color same thing with the concord grape I was originally thinking of doing a pale uh, summer peach actually, pale pink, and it just wasn't showing up against the gray. So I have never really thought that I would knit Concord grape for myself in a whole big thing, but it works really well in the stripes. Yeah, it's great. And it's so comfortable. I've been wearing it a lot around the store. I think it's going to be, uh, I don't think it's going to be a store sample for very long. I think it's going to be in my wardrobe rotation for, for the, uh, for the autumn that's the season coming up autumn uh and just for fun i threw on naomi's sweater her macarons cardigan uh when we did our little change just to show you what it looks like with a little bit less ease so i, I i'm about a 35 bust so on me this is closer to eight inches you see it's still definitely got boxy feel to it but maybe not quite feeling as oversized mm -hmm. and obviously i the you know the inches and inches of white tank top is not ideal i would definitely want this to fit you know more down here uh, or under a dress like I have a few dresses with that like true waist mm -hmm. shape and that's something that I would love to pair this with all my jeans are like high-waisted enough that they're actually at my my natural waist so <laughs> can't take this 90 because like, I'm that 80s bit you know I the jeans they must be low <laughs> I can't do it they're skinny and low <laughs> So anyway, there you go. You can see this with, um, on a different size. And we already have a couple of staffers who are interested in making this too. So as soon as we have some more finished ones to show you how this looks on different bodies, yeah. we are going to share that on Instagram, of course. And I'll have a DK weight version coming up too in. This is the Mimi sweater by Marie-Christine Levesque, who is a, I, she's a Francophone designer based in New Brunswick at the moment, I believe. And, uh, but this pattern is also available in English, all of her patterns are. And I knit this in La bien Helix, held double. And I really like this fabric because the fiber content is very similar to Cori Worsted, but by holding this like sort of generous, heavy lace weight, by holding it double, you end up with a sort of even lighter, a lighter fabric than, than Cori. Yeah. Um, I should have checked the gauge of this pattern. 18 stitches is the gauge of this pattern. So you could knit this in Cori Worsted, but it just has like a, a much lighter, blousier fabric to it in Helix Held Double. And it just bloomed up so beautifully so it doesn't look like you've got two strands together. It, no, it, yeah, it's a really cohesive fabric. And I just love this super cute feminine lace collar. This is the 35 inch size, which means about two inches of one and a half, two inches of positive ease on me. And it, again, really cropped, mostly because I wanted to finish it in time <laughs> for the festival, but it really has a closer fitting blouse style on me. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Than this uh, oversized. So it's a different fit. It's like the, the desired fit that I was going for was quite different from what I usually do. Um, Again, it looks really cute with, I, I wore it with a high-waisted skirt. It really feels almost like a little bit more of a formal piece. Yeah, yeah, at the same time, it's wearable in a different way from a lot of the pieces in my closet. It's nice to be a little dressed up in my knits. And I put this on and I was instantly smiling and I tried it on with a bunch of different stuff in my closet and every outfit just made me happy. And I'm and I, really excited to wear this more as it cools down. I mean, I know this isn't you at all, but I could totally see rocking this with like some little pearl studs mm -hmm. and you know, it's like a trouser with some pleats. I did try this on with a smart black pant. A smart black pant, lovely. Um, Maybe a shiny patent leather <laughs> loafer. Yeah. Like go full like Charlotte from Sex and the City. It could totally be that. I also tried it on with a bunch of flouncy skirts. And it Lovely. Was really well, and this is speaking of Knit City. This was my rush to finish for the Knit City uh, show back in April. This is the Dragon Lore shawl. 
by Alexander Davidoff in La Bien Aimée Merino DK. So we brought in Fade specifically for this pattern because we saw her at Vogue Knitting wearing this and we were just like, whatever that is, we gotta have it. Um, it was a super duper fun knit. Um, it's, it looks more complicated than it is. It's just increases and decreases. Um, and you're doing some casting on of new stitches uh, at the ends of each sort of repeat to build out from the bottom to the top. And it uses four skeins of La Bienne May Merino DK. And we do not have any more left of this colorway, which was called Celestial Dragon. Uh, but we do have uh, skeins left from a couple of the other kits. We, we took them apart so people could buy individual skeins, but if you're interested, we can easily put together a really cool fade for you. It's uh, four, yeah, four different colors. Um, and I believe we have, so <laughs> I loved the names of them. We had the Mountain Dragon kit and the Sea Dragon kit. Um, but even the skeins from those two intermingle kind of really together. beautifully. Um, so if you really love this effect, um, there are a few other patterns, notably the Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrea Maori comes to mind. Um, and there is a, I can't forget the name of the pattern exactly off the top of my head, but West Knits has a DK, La Bien Aimee DK shawl that uses a fade. Um, so there are so many options for patterns that make beautiful use, designed especially for this fading effect, um, regardless effect. of whether, like if this pattern isn't, I don't know why it wouldn't be your thing. Yeah, it's, it's super fun. Thing, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so when Alexandra was wearing her, she was sort of wearing it this way, and she had like a special tassel holding it to sort of do a very really um, cool. cool off the shoulder thing. But honestly, I am, I am always devoted to the kerchief style. And I really, I just think, it's big and it's heavy, but it's incredibly beautiful. Like I just, the it's, way that that frames the face. Yeah. The, and as a lover of fades, I've knit a lot of them. Um, the way that the pattern has you do this fade is expertly managed, not only for how it looks, but for yarn management. You do not feel like anything is wasted. Of course you have bits and bobs left over. It doesn't use every single yard, uh, but it's really, really well managed that to sort of balance it out. So that you don't feel at the end like, well, why did I have this fourth skein? Mm -hmm. I only used, you know, 10 grams of it. It's not like that at all. So I, I, I couldn't recommend the pattern more. And also Alexandra's work in general. She's used this stitch technique in a few different things. So also if DK isn't your thing, there's mm -hmm. other options as well. So It's just got this costume, fantastical vibe to it that is still just so wearable. It makes me feel like that a, a fantasy novel. I know. Princess, warrior, whatever yeah. type vibe, but then it's just so wearable and... You nailed it. I think yeah. I'm often attracted to fantasy elements in knits, and I think that's part of what attracted me to wanting to make my own clothes, is is being able to reach for that. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not the thing I'm going to wear day in, day out, but that moment when I reach for it and go, like, I made this, mm -hmm. and it's so wild and over the top and the only other place you'd see anything like this is on a runway or in some kind of fantastical editorial show. photo yeah. shoot or something and to be able to have access to that through the, the work of your own hands I'm always gonna fall for that I love it anyway I it, this mostly lives at the store at the moment um but I think come the the colder weather I might be putting it on for so uh that's about it for finished objects but we have tons of new and restocked yarns and goodies to show you as well and one of them we're so excited to have back in large quantities this is make it tweed by rico yarns and as you can see hopefully it's a very very thin sort of thread weight yarn and what this is designed for is to hold along with other yarns and turn them into a sort of confetti tweed um, and this first came to our attention from a customer messaging us on Instagram saying, can you get this? And I was like, I don't know what that is, but the answer is yes, I will do whatever is required. We didn't really know what we were in for. It's yeah, it's been a little fabulous. bit tough to get um, yeah. a regular supply of it. Uh, I don't think that the creator of this yarn was prepared <laughs> for how popular it would prove, um, but they seem to be back on track now. So we have a, you really can't tell from seeing this in the ball what it does. So we have a few different swatches and samples to show you. So first of all, we have um, a little sample that's knit with Camarose Snepnook, which is a bulky weight uh, blown yarn that's quite fuzzy. And one of the reasons we really fuzz. like using this yarn with a fuzzy yarn like this is it kind of melts the 
tweed into the yarn. You, you really cannot tell that they're not kind of the same thing. And, and it works particularly well because the fuzz really helps with the texture. I have a swatch of it here with a much uh, sort of with a less fuzzy DK weight yarn and you can feel the little tweedy nups feeling a little more cottony or like a little bit more like sewing thread in the texture which is absolutely not a bad thing but definitely does feel quite different from this yarn without the make it tweed holding it with something like snuff nuggle air or along with the mohair and fingering weight this is the brick color of our happy four ply and brick mohair bliss mohair um that extra level of fuzz really keeps the texture soft and disguises that raised feeling of the nups yeah so the other thing you'll note is when you see it um, here with this sort of uh, whitish gray base, uh, you don't see the thread sort of holding those nuts together as much because the base thread of it is quite light colored. So then you really see mm -hmm. the pops of the rainbow. But when you pair it with something that has a stronger base color, you can see a little bit more the thread of the make a tweed in each stitch. Again, neither of these things is an issue. It's just giving you full disclosure on what you might want to use this with. And around the store, we've been calling this the stash refresher uh, because it kind of gives new life to yarns you already have. If there's something that's languishing in your stash that you know you thought you were gonna love, but you can't quite figure it out, maybe this is what's gonna change your mind about it. The other thing I love is sometimes, you know, you buy enough for your project, you buy too much, you have a couple of skeins left over and you just kind of don't want the same texture or the same color even True, though you're going to yeah. do a different project. I feel like this is a great way to bring totally, totally new life to something that you have left over in your stash from another project and it will yeah. feel completely different to you when you're working on it. And one of the questions we've had about this is, you know, does it change your gauge? And the truth is, no, it really doesn't. It's so fine that you're not going to notice any change in gauge when you use this. The other thing I would say is use caution in terms of your yarn management. It is wrapped around a cardboard core in here, um, like a lot of novelty yarns are. So you just wanna make sure that you keep it maybe in a Ziploc or in a separate little bag somewhere and keep your eye on it that it's not getting tangled out of control. Um, another frequently asked question that I've answered on Instagram a couple times is how it affects washing. Now on the ball band it says uh, 30 degrees uh, machine washable. I haven't tried it machine washing, but I did give this a really thorough wet block um, and there was no runoff from it. It didn't change at all. Um, as it, it didn't actually occur to me to, to think it would block differently. I just was like, oh, I'll wet block the sweater and I, and I did and it, it was totally fine. Um, I think we've also steam blocked swatches with an iron and it's been fine. I mean, it's this is on all. Yeah unnatural fibers fiber which is not mm -hmm. something we generally have a lot of in our store it's the it's obviously the special effect that yeah. it creates is something where we're going to overlook the fact that it's not natural fibers it's viscose acrylic and nylon but yeah. it kind of has to be to get the effect that it's going for yeah um i think a tweed effect cobweb all natural yarn would be like my total unicorn <laughs> <laughs> it would be pretty cool um, but anyway, so we, yeah, haven't found it to change in the blocking at all. Obviously, our first answer to those kinds of questions is always swatch it, treat swatch, the swatch, swatch like it. you would, yeah. like you like you want to treat the object. Put it through the washing machine. I think I think it would be great if someone did. Let us know if you do or if you have, and and the effect because uh, we haven't done it. We'd love to know. I did see somebody came into the store having held this with a black yarn in like a turtle dove style sweater. It may have actually been the turtle dove. She didn't say. Um, but with a black base yarn and it looked fantastic. Oh, cool. It reminded me, I actually asked her, is that the Make It Tweed or is it the Make It Rainbow? Because there was, the moment it's currently on pause with production from what we can tell, there was a black based version called Make It Rainbow where the base thread was this kind of, you can tell it's overall kind of white. The other one was a black base and had a lower yardage. Um, so I thought maybe she'd use that because it blended so well with the base of the sweater and no, she used make Cool, it that's really good to really know. Really cool to know. So if you're lamenting the lack of Make It Rainbow, this Give it a try. is still worth a try. 
Yeah, and then right now, and it seems like a lot of other shops doing the same thing, we still have our listing for Make It Rainbow up on our website um, so that you can click notify me if it comes back. And we're just sort of, I think it's like an act of hope on my part to yeah. leave it there where I'm Manifest really hoping. Because <laughs> apparently it's that they, they had some reports that it was um, running in the wash. Like bleeding, which we never, we swatched it, we never noticed. I think no. most hand knitters probably wouldn't have noticed it because we don't, we don't treat our knits that amount, well. But, but yeah. So we're hoping, but in the meantime, we're really, really excited to have lots of this. And, uh, you know, three or four balls is a sweater for most folks. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the kind of thing that... It's 445 meters, 500-ish yards. Yeah. It's so, and, you know, it's not an expensive thing to add to your stash. Grab it because, I, you know, it does... It's funny, we have so much of it right now, but when I look at how, like, I was moving some of the boxes around yeah. and going, like... Yeah, we have a lot, but, but like we sold a lot. We have sold a lot since yeah. it landed a couple of weeks ago. So if it interests you, I'd say get on it. Uh, obviously, we will do our best to keep it in stock going forward, but um, it's been a, a bit of a tough one to keep keep around. Uh, also, because we keep knitting with we it. We keep knitting with <laughs> it. Too. I have like little half balls all over the place. Uh, it's just so much fun. You see all the little pops of color emerging. Should I do our Malabrigo next? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is not not at all a new yarn, but it is new to our shelves. This is the um, Malabrigo Mikita, which is their single ply fingering super wash, like the classic, that's so great for shawls and also for garments too. Malabrigo have been like a big player in hand dyed yarn for years Decades, i think the first really. the first hand dyed yarn i knit with was malabrigo i think rios i think i used archangel on worsted weight or arco iris it's also a classic. they have some really iconic colors um and there's a reason they're still around they're just i i think a lot of knitters out there have fond memories probably of this being the first hand dyed yarn that they discovered in like a whole world of, of possibilities and colors and textures and just the how much more you could do by making things yourself than what you could find in stores that's what a world i discovered when i first knit yeah with malabrigo so we decided to bring it in and cover our sort of feature wall with we have over 50 colors and just this is like a random sampling just to if you're not familiar with Malabrigo to show you so here's an example of like a classic semi-solid where there's that a little bit of variation but overall this reads as something fairly solid that you could knit a solid I guess you know as a busy cables or lace and not have it interrupt this is slightly more into getting into variegation but very subtle variegation changes between blues and purples which is another thing they do really well and then you're holding the Rosalinda. this would be the next one on the scale in terms of, they have some beautiful soft pastels as well. Um, and these variegated yarns that start bringing in the same sort of tonal range, all pastel, but still a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of pink, but it's not reading as a full on multicolored yarn. And then there's this one. Yeah, so this is one of those iconic ones. This That's is Arco Iris. Iris. Yeah, so this has got greens and purples and grays and blues and oranges and they're just so beautiful all together. So this is also a range. Are you gonna get another one? I'm gonna get the sample. Oh, perfect. So this is something also that I think is, uh, Archangel is one that Naomi mentions a favorite of mine as well. That's in like the oranges and purples and yellows. And this, they very generously sent along a sample to show how they knit up. And this is English Rose, the sample. Uh, the shawl yeah. is called Chatsworth. We'll link it below if we can find it on Ravelry. Um, and so this is an example of how one of those slightly more variegated skeins, perhaps maybe in this world, in yeah. the, one of the ones like this ends up knitting up. You don't get those uh, pops of speckles quite as much. Each of the color bursts is a few stitches to an inch big, say. Um, but overall, it definitely is reading as a variegated hand dyed. And then we also have a couple of straight up speckles that I love. So this is sort of at the, at the furthest, most intense end of the, of the hand eye where there is variegation and speckles. And we have these in a number of different sort of tones and colors. I love these as like a punchy yeah. accent. So you're doing Stephen West knit yeah. alongs, you're doing the shawl, um, the mystery shawls. I find something like this works so well in that context. Yeah. 
and there's a really good consistency within each skein on these yeah um the these variegated ones they're so good for these long shawl patterns where you have really long rows because that helps minimize pooling whereas if you're in smaller circumferences that same color patch can come around a little bit more often uh impossible to predict pooling but if you want to avoid those kind of like big blocky almost geometric assign like assignments of, of color uh picking a pattern which ends up having really long rows yeah will help to, to spread it. that all out and blend it yes exactly whereas the speckled skeins they're a lot more consistent within themselves and i think you wouldn't notice pooling as much with those no i think there's so much going on that yeah. they they almost end up giving you like a pointillism or yeah, impressionist absolutely. feel once they are actually knit up and yeah. of course they also just look amazing on the shelf or in your stash and i know you just grabbed a whole bunch randomly to show the examples of the kinds of dyeing that malabrigo does but they just all all of them just go together. I could totally see a Stephen West. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, we're really excited to have it on the shelves. And like we said, we both have these sort of nostalgic memories of it, but also it's totally current and at the Absolutely. moment as well. And they're always, you know, experimenting, adding special occasion colors. Yeah. So we're keeping on top of that and making sure we have a nice variety Absolutely. on the shelves. And if there's a color you particularly like of it, let us know. Yeah. Uh, write us an email or something. We can look into adding it on a future order. We're always happy to, to bring in an extra color at it, especially if we know somebody's really interested yeah, in it. Yeah, um, So that was a 100% merino, beautifully soft single ply yarn, and a really great substitute in any patterns calling for fingering weight yarn. And you know, there are so many, so many out there. So another big restock that we've been waiting for for a while is from Dererum Natura, which is a uh, we buy three bases from them, but we have two that just came back in. So one of them is Gilead, and one of them is Ulysse. So Ulysse is a sport weight yarn, 100% uh, untreated merino. As we were saying, our new yarn, Euphoria, is also a 100% untreated merino, but this is quite a different spin. Um, it does feel a little bit more rustic. It does soften up a lot with washing it and, does, and yeah. blocking, but I'd say it's got a toothiness to it as well, a little bit more so. Uh, it's, it's in that middle, like, I wouldn't call it rustic, but it's definitely mm. not super soft. It's still, it it doesn't have a kind of halo that's going to itch. It's a really matte mm -hmm. yarn. It's really round and plump and bouncy. And it is so good for things that need structure and for color work, cables, stitch definition. We have a shawl of Mona's. This is the uh, Ecker shawl by Mona. Um, Mona Schmidt, I'm Mona Schmidt, Schmidt yeah, our, our, which has our very own. a garter lace design yeah. in it. So we can see the lace a little bit. That shows up really nicely. That's the Lagon color, which I also pulled here so you can get a sense. And it's, it does have a slightly heathered uh, undertone to it, which gives it a lot of really beautiful depth to these colors. Yeah. And then the um, sort of heavy worsted weight is called Gilead. Uh, do I have that correct? Yeah. Again, uh, really round and plump and bouncy. And uh, just for comparison, I grabbed a very similar color in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter because these yarns are quite substitutable for each other. But just to give you a little bit of a look at how those different spins and different yarns. So this is a Merino. This is an American a Targi, Targi, right? Yeah. yeah. Both lovely. Uh, but uh, if you have some uh, patterns calling for shelter, uh, or vice versa. Yeah, Gilead these are two yarns you can definitely look at, sort of side by side, or even combine combine into something. Yeah, if you can't find exactly the right color. The shelter, the these handy little fifty gram skeins, um, right? Did yeah. I get that right? Yeah. And uh, Gilead is one hundred grams. So if you have like a color work pattern, you don't want tons of leftovers. You could work the color work in shelter. Uh, we have some really great skein dyed bright colors that they introduced while they were having supply issues on their standard spins. But we also have a good week stock of the classic colors too. Um, so anything, a color work yoke sweater, for example, you could do the main body in Gilead, you get better bang for your buck with the 100 gram skeins and the, you, and the shelter would be perfect for color work without tons of leftovers. Yeah. And just because I, you know, why not? I thought I'd, I'd throw out a sample here of something that we did do in Gilead. This is the stalagmite or stalactite, sorry, stalactite <laughs> sweater. This is originally from Lina Magazine issue four. It's by Camille Rossell. And this we used six balls of Gilead to do the size three. And uh, that's been kicking around the store for ages. Oh, and you know, and I was talking it. about pilling and merino pilling and things. 
it's it's holding up super well. It's per, it's like in such great shape. You that could, is something I love about these yeah. yarns is I feel that they really perfectly sort of thread the needle of softness and joy to knit with, mm -hmm. with this sort of durability. I have a yeah. quite tight fitting sweater that I knit in the Ulysse uh, with some color work and like even with how tight it is and I'm wearing jackets over it like mm -hmm. the blazers, it looks amazing. And, Years later. Yeah, and I think this is another example where that tighter gauge has helped. This sweater, this is a 21 stitch gauge, which is on the tighter end for a worsted weight. I knit the Billy sweater by Sari Nordland in the Gilead, and I absolutely love it, but it's definitely going through its first stages of like first wear pilling. Um, and so it's another example of how a denser gauge can help keep those fibers in their spin. So we have a full restock of both the Gilead and the Ulysse, and probably later in the season, we will also bring back the Cyrano with more. Mm -hmm. We have it quite a bit at the moment, but I'm sure Absolutely. that will change soon, Yeah, which is uh, more of a bulky weight yarn. It's we, also great. We couldn't get all the colors we wanted to because the mill was out, like the, the factory was a bit backlogged on some colors. So we may also do another mid-season top up on that yeah. because it just, it's, it's always fun to bring in all popular. of the colors. They're just so good together and it's such a great palette that, uh, yeah, and I mean, it, now that we've told you that it's here, it will be gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so another new yarn, I mean, it, it's funny because it's been here since Knit City. It doesn't feel super new because, yeah, we got it for Knit City, but we didn't have a chance to tell you about it unless you're following us on Instagram. Um, this is the Moondrake Plush Packer Packer. Now, Moondrake, we've been huge fans uh, for a while now. After Rhinebeck last year, we where we just, where we met Rachel at uh, Woolen Folk, um, we got in the Fua Fua, beautiful brushed cashmere that we've talked about before. We've designed with it. We love it. And um, when we bumped into Rachel at Folk Knitting Live, she gave us a special preview scheme of Packer Packer, and it's incredible. It's fluffy it's kind of boucle to look at like it's it's not it's like it's got a crimp in it it's got a bit. crimp yes yeah. it's 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 got this different um spin rate between the um like the merino pies. core and the baby alpaca fuzz so it's not a boucle but it has this crimped almost boucle texture within it and um I jumped on the Pattern of the Moment Club a little while ago and knit Le Bandana by Aimé Gilles of La Bien Aimée. And so I knit my version using uh, Wensley uh, by La Bien Aimée with uh, a Paca Paca. So in Amy's original, she had this, both yarns were doubled, and I was like, well, how could I do it without having to double the yarn? She held Helix or Felix double and Fua Fua, Fua, Fua doubled. doubled. So I was like, oh, wait, we have both those brands mm -hmm. in different weights. I'm going to try it. So this was my Le Bandana, uh, and I enjoyed knitting with the Paca Paca so much. This was on a 4.5 yeah. needle. And that substitution worked really well. I was talking about Helix Held Double in this sweater earlier and how it's a little lighter than Corey or Wensley on its own. And Fua Held Double is a little lighter than, than Plush Paca Paca. But these are comparable in weight, and so it turned out a little heavier. You used yeah. a bigger needle? Well, and what I ended up having to do, I realized really quickly, is switch needle sizes between my stripes. Ah. So um, I had a, sorry, it was a 4.5 for the, for the Wensley, and then a 4 millimeter for the Paca Paca okay. to get them to be the same size. But even as I was knitting, I was like, I am dying to knit this now on a bigger needle and let mm. it breathe a little bit mm -hmm. more. So I have a whip. Ooh. So, hang on. so I felt like I desperately needed sort of like a bold, fun, colorful knit. So I'm knitting Naomi's warm up sweater in a rugby stripe for myself. And I am using the Sneff Nug in uh, just a black Sneff Nug striped with the Fua Fua, or sorry, not the Fua, the Paca Paca in electric uh, purple. So, so good. So this is on a five millimeter needle and I am a very loose knitter. So mm. I think for a similar fabric, you might need to Six go up. So, yeah. Um, and I'm, I think I'm, I'm slightly above the gauge called for in this sweater. So I'm knitting size two, um, but I'm definitely 
over gauge by a little bit. I'm I've decided just like I'm in just this whole like it. roll with it mode right now. I know Absolutely. it's such a classic shape. I'm not remotely worried about it's anything. Like the raglan, the deep. sleeve split will be deeper, and that's totally just like relaxed in the silhouette you're going for when you mention something like rugby sweater. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's. I'm calling it yeah. my accident, accidental Barbenheimer. I wasn't <laughs> trying to ride that trend, but then when I took a photo of myself and I was like, oh yeah, this is totally like the black and pink that everyone's doing. <laughs> so I am actually going to make, I'm going to rip back a little bit. I <laughs> consulted with my family while we were away at a cottage and I oh, you have to have three complete pink stripes before you start the black ribbing, but it's just getting too long for how I see it styled. So I'm going to mm -hmm. take this back and, and rib in the in the uh, packa packa to finish up the body. And it'll still be three stripes, but it's the last just, stripe yeah, will, we'll be, some will have some ribbing in it and it'll be nice and balanced. Yeah, so obviously when I'm finished this, I will post my project notes and uh, some guidelines on like how to calculate yardage if you're gonna do stripes like this. Um, it's looking like it's gonna be about two thirds, one third okay. split on depending helpful. on which yarn you start with. So obviously I wanna offer guidance in case you're, this inspires you to try something similar. Cause you know, we've got so far, looking like I'm going to get away with like 1.5 of this, maybe 1.7 skeins of the Paka Paka. This is making me think a thought I'm having as I speak. Mm -hmm. um, because we did the warm up sweater with sort of nautical stripes yeah. too in Snuff Nug. And I added those stripe notes just to the regular Ravelry page. But now that you've done this too, I think we should have like sort of PDF expansion packs that we should load in. Yeah, to that like the stripes. On Ravelry so that um, it's a little more cohesive and like you can print Where it out easily, it. you can save it easily and have it in your library rather than keep checking the Ravelry page for like, and then Steph did this version and then Naomi did this version. I think that's a great idea. Let's do it. Um, yeah, good. Excellent work. So yeah, back in like four yeah. months and see if we've actually <laughs> done that, but. <laughs> yeah, it's fun when something like this, like the, this stripe pattern, like I was really just trying to bang out a sample for the store and then was totally completely like, on why don't I have a sweater with this stripe? <laughs> and why don't I have a sweater with this yarn? Yeah. So I'm super looking forward to getting that finished up. So there you go. Those are some new yarns and um, a, a little whip that, you know, hopefully isn't going to be another six month adventure. I'm very close <laughs> to getting that one done. And then we have a couple little accessories yeah, that we're worth uh, chatting about. Yeah, finish up with those. Okay. Okay, well, let's keep on with the colorful trends. Yeah, th so this was another thing where I just saw this fly across our Instagram feed and was like, oh, we need that. So I think I got a message from, I woke up to a message from you. I'm like, permission like, to order this? May I? And then like 30 th 34 minutes later, it was like, I did it. <laughs> so I get the order confirmation and I wake up to both of these and I'm like, I'm so glad you did that. Yeah, <laughs> I just didn't want to wait. Okay, so this is a little color wheel, like a functional spinny color wheel keychain from a company called The Grey Muse. They make lots of cool pins and stickers and stuff, but this really was like too. the knitter's vert thing. I just thought this was such a cool thing to have. Um, I find this really fun to fiddle with, it's, but it's, it's also like little... practical. Now granted, a full and complete <laughs> proper color wheel for an artist should have also um, variations in the hues of the colors in the background. But this actually has got a surprisingly functional uh, one of the things I've been looking at it for is like the, the tri colors, the tri uh -huh. colors in the middle. So great for picking stripes. Yeah, like or, co or color work, like yeah. getting ideas for where the stripes, what stripes will go together. So I mean, mostly here, like as a fun trinket, a little extra, a um, great gift for somebody. Who, yeah. Not just a knitter, but a painter, anybody who's interested in art, in decor, in anything like that. We had a kid in the other day. Um, he... I don't know how old he was, but I said, maybe he was asking what this was. And I said, well, maybe you've, have you, I don't know if you've learned about the colors in school yet. And his mom was like, he's not in school yet. I was like, oh yeah, I have no idea how old kids are. <laughs> um, but he was super, he was super into this. Um, and uh, his mom didn't buy it no. for him. It was no. very much he's, a not too today, young. sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> thing, but it's just got that kind of, it satisfies that curiosity for, um, for like that art class style of play and experimentation. And has that great fidget factor too, which you know, totally. It's very nice to have these it in my pocket. It literally spins. <laughs> yeah. I also overheard that kid later looking at our petite pochettes, which we're expecting a restock on soon. He was like, I could put my accessories in this. Oh, bless. I was like, <laughs> what accessories does he have? <laughs> I 
Oh, no. Fidget spinners, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, mm. his, his mum said he's really into to measuring tapes. Oh, Veronica went through a phase yeah. with measuring tapes, too. I mean, I think that there is something magical about them. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so Anyways, uh, I was really <laughs> fascinated with this kid's world. I was, like, listening to his journey around the store, and I was like, wow, this is the most engaged, the youngest, <laughs> most engaged <laughs> customer I've ever witnessed in here. <laughs> Um, another cool, uh, this is definitely maybe more practical than, like, or directly practical to yeah, knitting. Yeah, they, they don't spin. No spinning. Sadly. So these are from a company called Floops. These are called a Flox knitting tool. And I, instead of taking it out of the packaging, I have mine with me. So it's like a bendy, it's a bendy pointy. It's a bendy point. It's a bendy point. So basically in the center here, we have sort of a covered, obviously, um, wire that has a memory to it that can be turned into a loop. Uh, it, so this can be used as a cable needle in a, in a hurry. It can be used as a stitch marker. You can hold stitches on hold with it. Uh, you can even use it to sort of quickly hold two pieces of knitting together while you seam them. Mm. Uh, what I most recently used this for is I was working on a pair of mittens and put thumb stitches on hold with this. And what was great is that instead of having to like kind of pick them up, I was able to just knit right off of it when I was yes, ready to yeah. uh, get back onto the thumb. Same thing if, I, I think this happens more with bottom up sweaters when you join in the round with the yoke, for example, mm -hmm. but I have knit bottom up sweaters where you put say 10 stitches of the underarm on hold and then you're gonna do the same for the sleeve. And if you had these on the flocks, you could just graft them together off of these. Yeah. Um, the other thing I've been using it for is, I find it, I've been knitting more cables recently and I, find it really difficult to tell which row was actually the cable row. Mm -hmm. So like when I've it. used this as a cable needle, when I'm done the row, I then hook it through a stitch from that row to remind me which was the actual row of the actual cable. So if you're like, oh, you're doing this one every eighth every row. Every eighth, it's so much easier to count. I don't usually use row markers, but where row, row counters you, I don't know, I find it a lot easier to keep track of something actually pinned into my knitting than a row counter off to the side. Yeah, I can never remember if I did it at the beginning yeah. or at the end. Exactly. Or, yeah. yeah. So for that and also for something like decreases or increases that have to happen every X rows, this is a really simple way to mark those. Um, and then Hannah was saying that she uses it if she notices she's dropped a stitch like a bunch of stitches ago or a few rows down or something. This happens to me too. I pick up work and I'm like, oh, I did the mohair there but I didn't catch the main yarn I want to go back and fix that with a crochet hook to remind yourself that it's there you can toss one of these in yeah come around to it later and all sorts of little things like it's that. rare that something you know knitting is a very old art mm -hmm. it's rare that something is innovative and I think that this is innovative like yeah, it really is absolutely. it's it's not complicated but it's innovative and genuinely useful yeah and I have pulled this out far more than I expected to when Me I too. added it to my kit I think the fact that it's there I find uses for it yeah absolutely it was I first saw it marketed as a cable needle, and I'm like, oh, I don't really use cable needles, though. Yeah. But just having it around, I've, yeah, I've, I've figured out uses for it as I've gone along. And then from the same company, and I think this was their original product, mm. are these floop stitch markers. So we have them in two sizes. Um, we have them in sort of a skinny medium and a skinny small, which refers to more the, the weight of the actual stitch marker. So they are sort of covered... They're almost like a braid fabric or something. Um, they're like a hair elastics. Yeah, there you go. But they have this little lightweight ball sort of attachment yeah. at the end. And what's really nice about this is it means they don't roll when they fall and they're very easy to pick up and visually see. Yeah. So if you are a chronic loser of stitch markers, as I think most of us are, what's really nice about these is that they don't, they are much easier to find, much easier to pick up again. Yeah. Um, I've dropped stitch markers and I'm, I'm, pretty dexterous but like trying to get a ring off a flat surface can be kind of tricky you kind of have to push it to the edge of the table and grab mm -hmm. it um but the ball the spherical 3d vibe of the bead makes these really easy to just quickly pinch up if they've fallen down the couch they're not going to fall very far um yeah because <laughs> they're not super skinny and they're it's hard they look heavy when mm. you see them because it looks like these these balls are going to be heavy but they're obviously um hollow or something because they're not heavy because mm -hmm. that's where my original thing was like why would I want a bunch of really heavy stitch markers I don't know if it's metal even it might I just be like a coated plastic either way it's but, durable they haven't fallen off I've been using these for a couple months now and um yeah they, they're just they've all stayed together they're the kind of thing where you're like well why would I pay double for these stitch markers versus these clover ones the rubber ones like oh, the rubber yeah. ones every time I touch them they're like bing 
happy and I'm like, bye, I'll never see you again. Yes, and I love that they come. They come on a big, colourful um, safety pin. And I do actually end up putting them back on the safety pin. Yeah, so and I've managed really to track them them. well. So they are colour-coded, which is great if you have patterns with repeats, if you want a difference between your raglan markers and your beginning of round, for example. There are all sorts of different colours, but there are a few of every colour, if you see what there are, like yeah. five of each colour or something. Mm -hmm. And the medium are the bigger ones. I'd say those go up to about an eight millimeter needle. That would be a US. No, it's 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 said on the on, oh, the, website. on the website. I made there sure to put what they claim what they yeah. say as well, so that I'm not guessing yeah. that info is there. So the medium are for the larger needle sizes, and the small are for the smaller. And then, last up. These adorable stitch stoppers from Camp Fiber Yarns. I think we may have shown these we have. before on a podcast, but we've restocked and we have a bunch of fun colors. And honestly, these are the stitch stoppers that got me using stitch stoppers. I frequently now think I need some of those. I was, I think I have some in my bag here. And if I don't have them on my needles, I don't know why, because I'm going <laughs> to lose stitches. Uh, they're just, listen, they're not complicated. They are a silicone bead with a hole in them, but they are really grippy. Yeah. And they're also big enough that you can find them and see them in your notions po mm -hmm. pouch. And these are a huge difference maker in terms of like not having your stitches fall off your needles. And also if you're going to try stuff on, I find they're mm. pretty good. Unless it's really way too small. Like Unless it's a sweater really and you're pulling. trying to get your shoulders yeah. in like this. You know, be reasonable. But they're really, really good. Um, they're quite grippy. They do not mm -hmm. go popping off with, too much, with, with a little bit of pressure. Um, so these are fabulous. They go quite far up too if you've got pointed needle sizes. I think if you're using the Addy Turbo, which is super blunt, I think probably it would cap out at about 3.5 or 4. But for most standard needle points are a bit sharper than that, you could go up to at least 5 plus. I'm using these on my 5.5s. On your 5.5s. 5. So you can probably go a little higher than that, especially with sharper ones like Xiaogu. Yeah. Um, and then for smaller needles, um, we had somebody come in and get a couple of sets for her double pointed yeah, and you two. put two ends on one bead so she got two sets so that when the double pointed like folded up and you've got those four needles um two, two, just two. two two and two and two and two yeah yeah i have a bunch of these now because i also like i have a lot of whips <laughs> these are like whip enablers I'm like oh do, do, i'll just put that aside and come back to it in six years to see where, where things yeah. are and these are not the only colors we have. We just yeah. grab them. There are lots of fun ones. So that kind of takes us through our stuff. But I, one thing I, I, I wanted to flag is that we do have another pretty exciting announcement coming up. I guess the question is, how much do we want to say about it now? We haven't even discussed whether we were going to launch it on this podcast. But how about I'll give you a secret little puzzling hint that you did see it. I have shown it on this episode. You want to tell me more, don't you? I you do. want to tell me more, don't you? I want to tell me more. Um, okay, I'll just, I'll just say this. As we said earlier, we had this, this, a lot of time this summer to really talk about where we see all this stuff going. Like, where, you know, what do we want to do next? Um, for those of you who are new to the podcast, we are two years into our journey as the owners of Espace Tricot, and it's like, you know, a good time to think about what the future holds. And we really decided that. Naomi's dying is incredible and that she decided that <laughs> and, and it's just that we we be, you know we believe in ourselves and what we can create and so we're going to go into our Bon Tricot line a little bit more so obviously we have already shown you the Euphoria line we've shown you the minis and the new colors and just want to say we aren't stopping there that we've got more coming That's and more we're coming. really excited about it yeah good yeah okay. good 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 okay. <laughs> so, welcome to the fall, sort of, almost. Um, we are really excited to be back together after our sort of summer breaks and holidays and back in front of the camera and back talking to all of you. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us and letting us muse. And uh, we'll see you again soon with uh, new projects and new yarns. Absolutely. Lots yeah. of uh, autumnal whips to come, I reckon. Yeah. Okay. See you Bye. Soon. Bye.